Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm currently in the middle of filming a video on learning air roll left in Rocket League. Basically, I have five days to learn this mechanic. I'm currently two days in, and I have no clue what I'm doing. So, I'm enlisting the help of two YouTubers who have made countless videos on this topic and who know the mechanic inside and out. And hopefully, they'll be able to help me learn this mechanic before my Rocket League tournament that's coming up in three days. But, one last thing I have to mention before I get started is currently 98% of you all watching are not subscribed to the channel. So, if you're a part of that group, please consider subbing if you like this video. It's completely free, and you can unsub whenever you want. Anyways, without any further wait, let's talk about air rolling in Rocket League. Basically, here's what's up. Mm -hmm. So, I got College Rocket League qualifiers Sunday. Mm -hmm. Monday, I don't know what happened on YouTube, but all... I, maybe I clicked on one arrow left video. I don't know what happened. YouTube decided to just flood me with arrow left and arrow right content from both of you. Actually, like you, <laughs> you two are yeah, the, like... Yeah, you're late to the race here, bro. Me and I mean, have <laughs> been in a cold war over the arrow left videos. <laughs> Big Literally, <laughs> I, I was sitting there at like 9 o'clock at night procrastinating school because school just, you know, hit hard for me. And I was... It was just an onslaught of your two videos convincing me that I need to be able to directional air, like I need to learn arrow left. Yeah. Did it and convince so, you? I, I'm, I'm convinced. Look, it's I have a tournament Sunday, and I decided yes, today's Wednesday. I decided yesterday Tuesday that I was I had five days and I was gonna learn this mechanic. <laughs> Let's go. Yes. So I, I literally, I literally deleted my previous like air bind or uh, controller bind for a. Uh, mm -hmm. Air roll Not and replaced it replaced it with directional air roll. I know it was bold. I should have called you guys before I started this whole thing. I kind of started and then was like, I have no clue what I'm doing. And now I'm calling you. <laughs> but yeah. It is it it is what it is. So it, as far as bindings go, I like highly recommend you put it on a new bind. Yeah, really? I would say the same. I would say the same. That's for two reasons. Yeah. And I, I think the first reason is because you know, I, I said earlier, you don't need directional air roll for like simple mechanics like wave dashes, recoveries, or air roll shots. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to relearn that aspect. But on top of that, you don't want to be relearning a bind, I don't think. I, for whatever reason, if I'm trying to learn something new, I like to put it like in a new place, right? So instead of having to unlearn air roll and then relearn something on that same bind if you just put it on a new bind i think you can just learn the new thing by itself yeah like that conflicting muscle memory i, I see what you mean yeah here's another yeah. thing i did do you recommend this this is a question for both of you i put my air roll so obviously i replaced my old you know general air roll with a uh, arrow left but then i was like okay i guess if i don't have my old air roll i'm just gonna put you know add an air roll right bind but i don't really have that many buttons open that i wanted to use so i put my air roll right bind on my power slide button and in theory it should work right because you'll never power slide an air roll at the same like it's literally impossible right but i mean perhaps if you want to take a stab at it i, I kind of know what i think but Okay, so you, you're saying that you have your air roll right bind on your power slide bind? Yes. Okay. Correct. So my recommendation would be to have your power slide bind tied with your air roll binds because that just makes it a lot easier to chain dash, to wave dash, recover. Because I feel like having your power slide bind tied with a directional air roll is going to make it a little bit harder to recover because you know those times where you're like, falling and you want to land on all four wheels and also keep yeah. your momentum it's probably not good to have a directional air roll because you know you could like flip your car in accident or, oh you know, i see what you mean like yeah. when i land i can't hold power slide because it would air roll me and exactly. land me on the side yeah. of my car yeah. you're right i'm sure bones would probably have a similar opinion yeah that's exactly what i i have my normal air roll and my power slide on the same button just for that reason mm -hmm. so 
Yeah, oh that's exactly my what I gosh. would think. Okay, it's good you told I me that because I wouldn't I've, have realized that mm-hmm. by myself. I have a regular air roll on LB with power slide, and then I have I have air roll left on square. Gotcha. So it sounds like what I should do is keeping air roll left on whatever bond I have it now is fine. But I should really not have a directional air roll on my power slide, and I could replace that. I could replace that button I have now on power slide with a just like a general air roll that I have yeah. to use my stick to control. I yeah, I would say tie your power slide with your regular air roll button because that's just I feel like that's what most people do. That's like the default, and it just makes sense for recoveries, wave dashes air roll shot stuff like that because you can like land and hold it at the same time and not be turning your car yes that makes sense i'm gonna do that yeah for sure for sure for sure but oh now i gotta get ready now i, now I, I gotta well you don't even have like i said when you're learning a new bind like air roll left you can still just air aerial normal so with just your regular air roll if that's how you know to do it like you don't even have to implement it you could always just be training it and then when you get in game like if you're not comfortable with it yet you don't like have to force yourself i can to fall do back it. on that old, old bind yeah yeah i see i see what you mean there for sure Ooh. especially if you don't replace your arrow bind you can fall back on it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was gonna i was gonna follow up on what you're saying a second ago pap so you said two weeks probably minimum to feel comfortable with the controls Mm -hmm. um what would you say is the point when somebody who knew air roll or was was at least comfortable with air roll beforehand um switching over to directional air roll what is the point when they're equally as good as they were before you know rough estimate Uh, or you can talk about personal experience you could talk about what you've seen with you know Okay. Everything. I'll do. I'll just do personal experience, I guess, because it's really hard to. It's really hard to say for like a general person because you never know. People learn at different paces. Everyone has like a different uh, training schedule or you know however they switch the bind. But for me specifically, um, I would say it took me like two weeks to get comfortable with the new binds and then like a month at least to get back to where i was like with before like, yeah exactly at least at least a month and then i would probably say you know another month and a half two months till i actually started improving and getting comfortable and like that's when i started to like rank up again and stuff like that wow so i yeah, so I would, like it's a long process. That's why a lot of people I see in my comments, um, they're like, "Hey, I've been doing this for like three hours, and like I still can't do it." I'm like, "Man, <laughs> I'm like, man, you are in for a tree. It takes like, I don't even know. Like, I- I'm someone who puts in like a hundred hours every two weeks, pretty much consistently, and it if it took me that long, uh, it definitely gonna take longer than three hours to learn." Uh, right. a new bind or you know directional layer roll so that being said what are some ways that we can lessen the time it takes? are there even ways like obviously it's inevitable there's going to be a learning curve but how can people speed that up you can go for a sponge um yeah i think the biggest thing is just trying to make it incremental so when I first started learning it, I tried to just dive into constantly spinning the whole time and like trying to air dribble. And, you know, that's trying to run before you walk. And it's just kind of dumb to, to just jump in and think you're going to be able to do it right away. So, yeah, my big advice is just taking it like one step at a time. Like, learn your adjustments with single spins, learn to hit the ball with single spins, add in like useless spinning, you know, just really slowly add in things to your training so that by the time you get to you know constantly spinning you already have enough tools in your toolkit to actually you know survive the aerial gotcha you have any anything to add there paps yeah sure um i would say it's mm, it's really hard to say that oh doing this will you know help you learn faster because no matter what you're gonna have to put in time like you said it's a learning curve um but 
to piggyback off of what Bone said, um, something that I did, and unfortunately it's going to be only for PC people, um, I just went into the workshop maps, uh, Rings 3 or Lethemir's Giant Rings, and I would continuously do those while just spamming arrow left for, you know, hours uh, for the first week. And I feel like that really got me comfortable with my car control in the air with directional air roll. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like across the board, people love like every for everything. I, I feel like I'm always recommending workshop maps, like especially mm -hmm. rings. Rings is so good because you can you can no even though rings stays the same, you can always be focusing on something different. Exactly. Yeah, it's true. OK, so now that I'm at this point, right, I have my bind set up. I know, you know, roughly speaking, what I need I need to do to mm -hmm. learn air roll. What do you think are the what do you think is the best progression for me to take? Like in terms of, you know, this drill, then this drill, then this drill, then this training pack, then this workshop map. Hmm. Um for me, I would say you should, I think a lot of people when they're trying to learn arrow left or arrow right, whichever one, they try to jump right into ceiling shots or air dribbles or the more advanced mechanics. I think a good progression, uh, in my opinion, is to simply get comfortable controlling your car in the air, like, you know, get comfortable tornado spinning, reverse tornado spinning and all like the movements with directional air roll. And then, once you can like confidently keep yourself in the air, I would yeah. say, you know, then go to rings and maybe try to maneuver around the map. Or even if you're on console and you can't do that uh, with rings, use the pillars map and try to move yourself around that map and around the barriers and stuff. Uh, and I, I wouldn't say you should move on to really, or not move on, but you shouldn't expect to master, you know, air dribbles or something like that if you can't consistently keep your car in the air, right? Yeah. So I would say a good progression would be keeping your car in the air and then maneuvering around objects. And then you should, you know, maybe be trying to master an air dribble or something, but not until you're fully comfortable with your car control. First. Yeah, I, I would exactly that's kind of the progression i take you know just staying in the air is obviously the big thing just getting comfortable and then i would say going towards like non-moving targets where like that could be pillars or workshops you know you have those targets and they're not necessarily moving i would add in a little step in the middle there with just like high aerials just because you know it's obviously different adjusting to a moving target then it would be, you know, flying through a ring or, and then probably at the end there, yeah, start adding in some of those more advanced mechanics, your flip resets, your double taps, air dribbles, all of that. Gotcha. That makes sense to me. So like, so first, just learning how to control your car at the most simple level in the air, like staying up, mm -hmm. then aiming for a stationary target, then aiming for a moving target. And then only after you get past those points, actually aiming to do something like a dribble a, an air dribble a flip reset you know all those advanced mechanics seem yeah. about right yeah that's yep. good to me okay that's the strategy i'm going to be taking to try to learn this in three i got three days i got three yeah. days to go before sunday morning hits you're definitely going to be uh <laughs> not where you want to be in three days but if you try to follow those steps you definitely will make progress but, you know, like I mentioned earlier, you're looking at two weeks, probably minimum until you're actually comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. To have anywhere near what I, where I was at before. Exactly. Yeah. At least two weeks, you know, probably more like a month for that even. It's a good thing you guys told me to not go fully just arrow left, arrow right and actually keep one um, normal arrow button because... Uh, at the very least, I can fall back on that, like you were saying, Bones. Like, I'll yeah, that and, and it, a lot of those is just preference. So, like, I, I have friends who n have never used regular air roll at all, and they're fine. You know, it's just preference or what. However, you learned it, it's fine to do regular mechanics. Yeah, yeah, that that, that makes sense to me. Okay, so covered training. Man, I think I think I have like almost everything I need to finish up this learning experience i got three more days like i said 
gonna be interesting to see how it goes down but at least i have a footing now at least i kind of know what to do um I'm, ve I'm very curious to see uh how much progress you make in the next couple of days yeah uh well the yeah, people in the video for the, you boss the, yeah, the, 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 pe <laughs> the people in the video will either be laughing or clapping after <laughs> after <laughs> Probably a combination of both. <laughs> Hopefully I won't be throwing this Sunday. Don't tell my teammates. My teammates don't know I did this. So <laughs> the goal the goal is to be in comms with my teammates and to have them not be railing me. <laughs> uh, you better you better hope they don't watch the video then. Oh my goodness. <laughs> video is coming out one day after the qualifiers. Perfect. No need to worry. <laughs> Perfect. Do not even yeah, worry so about it. So they'll just be really upset or really happy. Yeah, there you go. Or pleasantly surprised. <laughs> yeah. Pleasantly <laughs> surprised. What if you start playing and they go, oh my God, dude, you got way better. Yeah, that's the dream. <laughs> that's the dream. <laughs> That'd be cool. All right, guys, thank you for coming on. Um, I'll throw your links in the description, but you guys can shout them out right now so people know. You can, go first, but you can go first, man. That's all good. Okay, yeah. It's just um, Sir Baby Bones on YouTube and Sir Baby Bones on Twitter. My Twitch is Baby Bones, and you'll find a link to my Discord on my channel. If awesome. you want to follow me, it's Paps Dude on Twitch, uh, just Paps on YouTube, and it's Paps Dude on Twitter. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you.